enough meat sauce to go around, am I right? It's February 1st, 2023, a ripe time to do a world news update. I have a slew of tabs open on my browser, much like many of you, and so it felt like a good idea to go through them because I can synthesize the information and paint a clear picture of dystopia, uh, fragmentation, collapse, and despair unfolding in literally every direction. I don't need to get fancy about it. I can just say it. Because your words have weight. How about being slapped in the face? From Chevron. Yes. This from CNN Business last month. Swimming in cash, Chevron plans a $75 billion slap in the face to drivers. Yep, peasant, keep working. Because while many blue chip companies reported lower profits last year, big oil was having a moment at the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. The Dow stock performed surged more than 50%. And where's your savings account? Do you have any retirement money? Oh no, oh, it's okay, it's okay. They're taking $75 billion and reinvesting, buying back their own shares so they can hype the stock more and give more dividends to shareholders and CEOs who are having a blast at the end of the world. Yes. <laughs> Fires and explosions. This is not the peaceful protest that city leaders asked for. This destruction appears to be from a rogue group away from the main crowd of protesters near the Trump Tower. They are wreaking havoc and destroying everything they can. Is there any sarcasm here? Maybe a catastrophic mutating event will strike the world in two years, a report says from Popular Mechanics. The summary, World Economic Forum report says, a business leaders believe a catastrophic cyber event is coming. Cybercrime will grow from a $3 trillion industry in 2015 to a $10.5 trillion industry by 2025. The unpredictable nature of cybercrime increases threats. Great, so a mutating cybercrime global event on top of a war with China, potentially Russia, BOE, uh, can we say more? El Nino, food shortages, good times. Buy guns and ammo. You know where this is going, guys. You know where this is going because we don't have enough native seeds. We'll just plant and regrow everything, right? Where? How? We don't have the native seed. We need native seeds in order to respond to climate change, but there aren't enough. In the wake of wildfires, floods, and droughts, restoring landscape and habitat requires native seeds, but the U.S. doesn't have enough, this report says, released also in the 27th. Time is of the essence to bank the seeds and genetic diversity that our land holds. Oopsies. Guess we should have paid more attention to the planet. Because its geological thermostat is too slow to prevent climate change. This from New Scientist. Rock weathering has helped keep the Earth's climate relatively stable for millions of years, but the process isn't fast enough to keep up with carbon emissions. So in essence, the top paragraph reactions between rock, rain, and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere have helped stabilize the climate through Earth's history, but they won't prevent our carbon emissions from causing severe warming. A warning. A study of these processes has concluded. However, the findings could help us devise a better way to trap CO2 and slow climate change. Oh, really? We can slow it because a looming El Nino could push us into a new era of global warming, global heating, climate breakdown, whatever you want to say. It's becoming clear the world won't re meet its goal of holding warming to less than 1.5 degrees. Way past that. The, we're currently around 1.4, 1.4 to 2 degrees warmer. But the next big El Nino could take us over 1.5. Everybody's catching up now. Everybody's catching up. Ooh, we just, we just missed that. I want to get back to climate and economy. I'm rapid firing through this, guys. Do I still have you? Do your, does your attention span last now? Do I need subtitles? Okay, House Committee um, Chair seeks to carve out an independent NOAA. So they've been already, NOAA has been a part of the Commerce Department and work comprises more than 50% of their budget. But they're thinking about branching out and having their own their own office. Because the Gmail creator says chat GBT like AI will destroy Google's business in two years. Do I need to read much more than that? No. Do you think so? Let me know in the comments. More AI. Scientists, this from CNN and, and AP News and routers and everybody. Scientists use AI to find the planet could cross critical warming thresholds sooner than expected. Oopsies. We'll get to uh, 1.5 is in within a decade. We know this. 
and two degrees. So really we'll get to like two degrees if you move the baseline back, which means absolute pure reckoning hell all over. Yeah, I'm sorry if you're asleep, I'm sorry. U.S. emissions of the world's most potent greenhouse gas are 50% higher than EPA estimates. This is from Inside Climate News. Electric utilities are responsible for the nation's higher than expected emissions of sulfur, hexafluoride, a greenhouse gas 25,000 times worse than carbon dioxide. So this stuff is coming out. 390 metric tons of SF6 were emitted in the atmosphere in 2018, uh, the most recent year for the, which the data is available, concluded from uh, operation between NOAA and the EPA. And... Yeah, it is absolutely disastrous coming from utilities. Good! Go. Run, motherfucker! Holy oh, shit! Yeah! Drying your clothes. Just kidding. Visualizing the scale of global fossil fuel production, I have not seen this yet. I, this is my first time. And we can see the Burj Khalifa, 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 tallest building in the world, 830 mil meters. And yet, look how much liquefied compared the volume of how much crude oil, liquefied natural gas, and coal. All of that to power um, over 80% of the global primary energy consumption. All those big blocks. We have to go to a happy green economy, okay? Because we've somehow managed to solve the extractive process. We can go against the law of thermodynamics, in which case all of this requires... Uh, this is a heat... Making this, producing this, creating this, into and transferring it into other forms of energy produces heat. Okay, we're heat generating civilization no matter how it's powered. We put shit in the air, we warm the planet like a blanket. Doesn't matter that the ozone is, is whole is healing, healing, okay? We're 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 warming the planet up. We're we're baking ourselves alive. And there's a lag between what we put in the atmosphere and what we feel. So by the time we get to the end of this decade, everyone's gonna be crying and killing each other in the streets. Man, have I become bitter or what? You know, I I took responsibility. I went through this whole journey from hopium to full-on doomer. And it wasn't without a massive amount of studying, of input from you guys, from... Um, reading up further on it from from tracking it from keeping watch with it you know keeping pace with the updates as they came along and it's safe to say that now that most all of the few remaining doom uh, realist climate channels here have all unanimous, unanimously agreed that we're doomed um, and that includes Mr. Beckwith. His interview with Jim Bendel at COP27 was enjoyable, and it reminded me that we're not alone. So, don't want to miss the party. Hope you enjoyed this February 1st news update. Thank you for your support, and let me know if you'd like to see other types of content or compilations. I appreciate it. I am documenting the collapse of human civilization. We're in it. I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.